Hi, I'm Beth. And I'm Lindsay. Welcome to our Sharpen Your Skills video series sponsored by Janome, Northcott, Coates, and The Warm Company. Join us each Wednesday in April as we share projects and tips to brush up on your sewing skills or learn a new technique. Using a variety of projects, we'll be sharing our secrets to sharpen your sewing skills. So first up, we have this really fun table runner project. It's really easy and due to its unique construction method, you don't have to add binding. Beth's going to show you how. Hi, I'm Beth and today I'll show you how to make this easy table runner from two and a half inch strips. We're using this really fun line from Banyan Batiks. It's called Color Blocking. And then we also have some canvas from Northcott mixed in as well. Now we've laid out our two and a half by 12 and a half inch strips. And we have 25 of these. We've laid them out in the order that we would like them on our table runner. So when you're sewing long strips together, the key to keeping them straight is to sew in an opposite direction with every other strip. So we're gonna start with this one, we're gonna go down this way, and then we're gonna go up this way, and then back down. So the way that I'm keeping track of that is I've put a pin in the top every other and the bottom every other. So that way I know that's where I'm gonna start sewing on that strip. So now we'll start to sew our strips together. And we'll sew with right sides together. Keep in mind, batiks don't have a right or wrong side, but our canvas line does. So now we're going to start at the top here where the pin is. And we're using our quarter inch foot with a guide for extra accuracy on our seams. Now we've sewn our first two together. So now we're gonna add this one and we're gonna start where the pin is. We'll take that one out. So we want to flip that around and sew down the opposite direction. Continue adding strips in this method for all 25 strips. Once you have your entire top piece, grab your 20 and a half by 50 and a half inch rectangle and we're going to layer our piece top on top of our rectangle with right sides together. And then we will pin this along the top edge. So when you have something with this many seams, it is easier to sew with them facing towards you. That way the foot is gonna glide over them nicely. So we're going to sew down the entire long edge with a quarter inch seam. Once you've sewn that long edge, then we will take this and fold it and then we're gonna line up the other two raw edges and then we'll sew along that whole thing and then that will create a tube. So on this one, you'll want to pin and then you wanna flip this so that you're sewing with the seams on the bottom so that they're facing towards you again. So once you have your tube sewn, you'll press your seams toward your backing color and then center the panel on the backing. So you'll have about two inches on either side of your pieced portion. And we've already pressed this, but you'll press that in place. So you have about two inches on either side. Next, we're going to add some fusible fleece to our table runner. And this just gives it a little structure. And we're using fusible fleece one from the warm company. Now it's a pretty big piece. It's a 16 by 50 inch piece, and we didn't have quite enough. So we wanted to give you a little tip for piecing, fusible fleece or batting, this works for both. So on your machine, you have a three-step zigzag and the stitch looks like a little dotted zigzag. So it's not a solid line on, on the machine, it's a dotted line. And this takes a little extra stitching to the zigzag and this just helps prevent tunneling and also 
keeps a little bit of stretch in the stitch. So what you do is center your cut lines on your foot and then you're going to just sew your zigzag and that'll catch both sides then of your piece and add a really nice seam to your fleece. Now if you had your quarter inch foot on, just make sure that you switch out to your regular foot to allow for that swing of the zigzag stitch. You don't see the seam very much and it still allows the fleece to stretch a little bit. Now we're going to fuse our fusible fleece to our table runner. So we've got the scratchy side, that's the fusible side, and that is facing the wrong side of our backing fabric. So we want to center that on the table runner and leave a quarter inch at each end. Now we don't want to iron directly on this side of the fusible fleece, so we need to flip it over. And we're using our cotton setting with steam. And then we are just going to fuse this from the front of the project. So just hold it in place and then move it. You want to leave it on there for a little bit to let that fuse. And just continue doing this for the rest of your table runner. So now that you've fused, we're just going to turn the tube right side out. Once you've given that a good pressing, you'll turn the edges on the short ends under about a quarter inch and then press that and then we'll top stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around. So we're using Coates Dual Duty XP thread and they have a variety of colors so you can pick one that complements or will stand out on your project. So we've picked a yellow that will blend in with our background fabric and we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch. And it's good to start on the side because we're back stitching here and this will be less visible on the side than on the ends when we're closing it. When you get to a corner, stop with your needle down and pivot, and then sew across the short edge, and that will close up the opening. Now that we've finished top stitching, we'll quilt the project. And we're going to quilt in the ditch, and we've got this great accessory foot from Janome. It is a ditch quilting foot. So it has a guide in the middle, and that runs right along your seam, and helps you get a really nice stitch in the ditch. One more thing to consider when stitching in the ditch is to stitch on the low side of your seam. So you can feel that all of our seams are pressed to this side so there's more bulk there it's a little bit higher. So you want to stitch on the low side there's less fabric to go through and your stitches will nest nicely down into the ditch. This is a pretty long table runner so as you get further down, you're going to notice you're going to have a lot of bulk on one end. So go ahead and roll that up and it'll fit nicely within the throat space of your machine. To secure this quilting, you'll want a back stitch or a stay stitch right at the beginning. And we switched out our thread for this really pretty blue. We would like our stitching in the ditch to kind of blend in so we felt like this color really looked nice with all of our different blues.
and now your table runner is finished. It would be really fun to make this in a variety of colors, maybe even with some seasonal prints, and you can have your table look cute all year round. That table runner is so fun, and I especially loved how you used the batiks. It looks so summery, and I think it'll be great to whip up before the season changes. So you may have noticed in that video, we used the ditch quilting foot to quilt the table runner. And we've got a few more quilting and accessory tips to share with you to help you sew better. So we are sewing on the Janome 3160 QDC, and it comes with the quilting accessory kit, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And that includes the walking foot and then the quarter inch foot. And these are two really essential feet yeah. for quilting success. So first of all is our quarter inch foot with guide. And we love this, and this is probably the one that we use the most on our machine, any machine, um, because you can run that seams or the edge of your fabric right along that guide and get your perfect quarter inch. So, so, so handy. Yeah, and what I love about this is a lot of the machines you buy don't come with a quarter inch foot. So true. Yeah, or a walking foot. So the fact that this does is a really great value. It is really nice. And then our next thing is the walking foot, and this is also super essential, really helpful for sewing through multiple layers and also great for quilting. So it helps feed the fabric through evenly because there's feed dogs built into the foot. So the top feed dogs on the foot and then your bottom feed dogs on your machine help pull those layers through all at the same time. And then you can also snap on the adjustable metal guide and then that helps you line up your stitches. So if you pop that onto the back, you can adjust it and you can line that up with your previously stitched lines to get perfectly stitched and spaced lines. Mm -hmm. Perfect for straight line quilting or any parallel lines you're doing across your project. Yes, so those are two really helpful tools for quilting. So the next one is the ditch quilting foot that we mentioned. We use that on the table runner, and it is an optional accessory, but if you do a lot of stitching in the ditch, I think you're gonna wanna pick this one up. Um, it helps you get perfectly placed ditch stitching, and the guide in the middle glides along the seam and helps you get those stitches right in the seam. So really helpful for that. And one tip that we wanted to share is you wanna stitch on the low side mm -hmm. of your seam, so you can even feel it when you run your finger over it, it's a little bump there. So you wanna be on the low side, that's gonna give you better, better results. Mm -hmm. And then our last thing is our straight stitch plate. So the normal stitch plate has a wider opening because it has to accommodate for um, the wider stitches like the zigzags and decorative stitches. Mm -hmm. But if you are having trouble with those fabrics being pulled down into the machine or they're getting eaten, then you might want to try the straight stitch plate. It has a smaller opening, and this also has a matching foot. And so you can only use this with a straight stitch, but this will help you to not have that fabric get pulled yeah. down in. So we're gonna pop this on the machine. So we've already taken our regular uh -huh. stitch plate off. And again, this is an optional accessory, yeah. but something that can really help you. Yeah, so while Beth screws that plate in, we just wanted to share a little bit about how this is useful in your sewing. So if you're like me, you sew a lot of things like triangle squares, or you may be you know, doing shapes like this. And my points always get pulled down under the machine. It just happens when you're sewing with like tiny points and triangles. This plate, because it doesn't have the large hole in the middle for, you know, to accommodate the swing of the needle, prevents the machine from pulling the tips of your fabric in. And then the bottom of the foot um, is a little more solid so that it pushes everything down and keeps things even as you're sewing. So this is really a game changer if you're sewing a lot of these fabrics and or you have trouble with this on your machine, which I know I definitely have. <laughs> yes, and one note you'll want to know is that you can only sew with a straight stitch in the center needle position on this. Otherwise, you're probably going to break a needle. Yeah. So. <laughs> So we can sew one of these and show you how this works. And it works really well. So like Lindsay said, this has a large surface area on the bottom, so it really gives you good contact too with your pieces. So that helps also. So you get just a really nice smooth start and no 
fabric is getting <laughs> pulled down into your machine. Yep, oh, that's so great. Yeah. Definitely gonna be using this moving forward. <laughs> Okay, so next we're gonna share block two and our So Easy sampler. Lindsay, I love the jewel tone colors that you picked out for these blocks. Mm -hmm. This is the canvas collection from Northcott mm -hmm. and I think the black really makes it pop. Yep. So this block has a lot of bias edges and we're going to give you some tips for working with those. Yeah, so this block is a doozy in that it uses all triangles to assemble and we know triangles can be tricky for people so we wanted to give you a few tips. So specifically we're working with triangles that have a bias edge which means they were cut um, on an angle across your fabric and what happens is it has a really stretchy side. So can you see how stretchy that one side is? <laughs> um, so this can cause a lot of distortion problems when you're sewing and cutting, and it can make your blocks turn out really misshapen if you're not careful. So the first thing we recommend is not touching these more than you need to. So once they're cut, the more you handle them and move them around and shuffle them, the more they're going to distort. So only touch them if you need to. <laughs> um, the second thing you want to do is if you're ironing them or pressing, you don't want to drag your iron across the pieces. That will cause them to distort more. So put your iron down, pick it up, and reposition if you need to iron them. So in this quilt, we have to sew two triangles together. So we're going to put them right sides together. And then on something like this, it's a lot easier to start at the square 90 degree angle here rather than the point. And we do have our straight stitch plate on which will help <laughs> us also, especially if you do have to start at the point. But it is a lot easier to start at that square edge. Yes, if you have the choice, start at the square edge. It'll just make your stitches a lot smoother. And then we also recommend um, when you're sewing pieces with bias edges that you pin your pieces, especially on larger pieces like this, because as you sew, things can pull and just the pins help keep everything lined up. So we put one right in the center seam and two on the ends to keep everything straight. And this one, unfortunately, is unavoidable to start at one of the points. But again, we've got the straight stitch plate. This has a smaller opening so it won't get sucked down into the machine. It really helps with that. So if you're sewing a lot of triangles, you might want to check out the straight stitch plate for your machine. Mm -hmm. So those are our tips for making this quilt block. Um, it is tricky to work with bias edges, but we think these tips will really help you be successful in making block two of our Sew Easy Sampler. Next, we're going to share eight ways to use washi tape in your sewing room. Thanks for joining us today. We had so much fun sharing these tips and tools for better sewing with you. 
We'll be back next Wednesday to share more sewing secrets and a fun tote bag project.